Thank you, and good afternoon. My name is Lisa Whitech, and I work in the Marketing and Events Department at FTD. I want to welcome you to the second of three free e-learning webinars hosted by FTD. This webinar is entitled, Pump Up the Profits in Your Wedding Business. Today, we will share some exciting ideas to help increase your wedding sales through upselling to boost your profits and keep your business soaring. FTD Education Team Member Ian Prosser will be leading this informative webinar. Involved in the floral industry for over 30 years, Ian has been responsible for the floral decorations for many high-profile events hosted by celebrities and dignitaries to include members of the British royal family and various U.S. presidential inaugurations. As an active flower shop owner in Florida, Ian has great ideas to help flower shops adjust their budget to fit any size event and make it look spectacular. Once Ian is finished with his presentation, the operator will, on the call will provide instructions on how you can ask questions. So without further ado, I would like to turn the call over to Ian to begin the webinar. Ian? Good afternoon. I'm Ian Prosser, and welcome to our webinar. Our title today is Pump Up the Profits in Your Wedding Business, and as Lisa already mentioned, I've been in the floral industry for over 30 years. A large portion of my business is weddings, and my experience with weddings ranges from small, intimate affairs to very large, lavish weddings, even celebrity weddings, and destination weddings on the beach or elsewhere. I'm here today to give you tips and ideas on how to make more money when selling weddings and to make a profit while doing this, which is the most important thing. So let's get started, and thanks to FTD for sponsoring this webinar today. Today's objective is to learn key ways to increase your overall wedding sales and to do it profitably. So how do we do this? Uh, consider add-on sales such as linens, chairs, plants, uplighting, etc. Let's start off by talking about upselling, which is the easiest thing to do, and by the power of suggestion, it's a wonderful, wonderful way to add to your bottom line. This is a photograph of a recent wedding that we did at a local hotel. Notice all the elements in addition to the flowers that are in this photograph. Guess what? We did it all. I was totally in charge of the design aspects of this wedding, and even though the bride had hired a wedding planner, the planner and I worked very closely together to bring the whole look together to be what you see it is today. From the draping, to the plant rental, to the custom-made tablecloths, the candlesticks, the chairs, the chair pads, etc., we did it all. You too can do this. You can upsell other designer items to create a whole look for the wedding or event and keep the profits from those items in-house. This also keeps you in total control of all the visual aspects of the event or the wedding. So how do we do this? Get to know the bride and our family to determine their spending capabilities. And 10 to 15% of our total wedding budget should be for flowers. So uh, in my store we have a script a telephone script so that when someone calls for an appointment, we ask a number of questions, like where the event will take place, are they using a wedding planner, how many bridesmaids do you have, and also do you have a budget in mind. Typically, as I said, the total budget is 10 to 15 percent of the overall cost of the wedding. At the start of the consultation, I tend to chat to her about general things and just make her feel at ease. People often laugh, but to be honest, what has worked for me in the 30 plus years that I've been in this industry is that I pay enormous attention to what kind of car they drive up in, the size of the engagement ring, how they're dressed, the designer of their wedding gown, as well as any other vendors that they may be considering or already have contracted. Very important, maintain eye contact with the bride. This is your barometer that you can tell from the eyes lighting up or the dullness of the eyes if you're going in the right direction. These indicators will also help you determine the ballpark that they're in for the money side of things. In this photograph, you see a prime example of making a beautiful wedding for a more budget conscious bride and making her wonderfully happy. The bride really couldn't afford all tall expensive centerpieces so we suggested every other table have something less significant. 
but it still gives her wow factor. Since this is a beachside wedding, we recommended using the beachy looking lanterns that we own with a pillar candle and a few blooms and perhaps a few leaves. Instead of all of her, her arrangements being more expensive, she cut her costs by almost one third by doing a cheaper version on some of the tables and we rented her the lantern, the blossoms and the shells for $60 instead of the few hundred dollars that the other tall arrangements cost. The wicker chargers well, we own those. They cost us $5 wholesale a few years back, and the first time we used them, we charged the client the full price. From then on in, we charge $2 each time, which then becomes pure profit. Here's a simple but beautiful look, a collection of bright and colorful Mokara orchids in clear glass containers. The bride is renting these vases from us, and the main expense, of course, is the flowers. We used only but a few stems to keep our costs in check. This look can be used on all tables, or half of them, where some can be, the other tables can be less expensive or even more expensive. Simple can still be elegant, and it doesn't have to look cheap. Well, you can either be the event designer, and not just the floral designer. So, in a recent event that we did, we styled a whole wedding. And there was a, even though there was a wedding planner involved, but I still styled the wedding. Now, by styling, I mean that I created the whole concept and took it from start to finish. I've known this bride and her mother for many years, and I was very familiar with the country club that the wedding would take place in. I knew what our expectations were. And with her input, we took the whole look that flowed from one room to the other, including the tent outside. And we provided the floral, the candles, the chairs, the tablecloth rental, and we pulled the whole look together. Some of it just by telephone calls. It's amazing how much pride you get from doing this when you see all of your plans that have only been in paper or in your head come to fruition and have a very thrilled family at the end of the day. So, get your costs right so that all of your work is profitable. Here is a chuppah that we did for a wedding. And as you can see, it's not an inexpensive chuppah or structure. And nowadays, there are lots of young women that are Christian that would like to have that structure, which normally was only used for a Jewish wedding. So now it's called structure. We've, we've uh, kind of changed the way that things happen these days. And girls are seeing all of these things in uh, magazines and shows, so they want it to. Well, the one place that you can go wrong is getting your costs wrong. And your cost of goods need to be in line, as you also have to make sure that you're getting enough money for your labor for doing it. Make sure you charge enough. You can certainly make it big and make it stunning, but you have to make sure that you've charged for everything and know how much it will take to make the look as special as everyone wants it to be. Also, be prepared for your staff to be there to take the whole thing apart after the ceremony, and don't forget to include that cost in your wedding budget. Remember, Way, way more labor is involved in weddings and events. You're not just making a $100 arrangement and putting it on a delivery truck. In this instance, or in many instances, when you're doing a wedding, it takes a driver and designers to set the whole thing up. So, remember when you're doing something such as an arbor or a structure or a chuppah that these items are produced on location. So, when you're sending people to build it, and decorate it, and then stay there and take it down afterwards, or it may well be a late night strike. All of these expenses need to be taken into account, as well as all of the building supplies that you require to put the, the item together. Okay, so how do we keep our labor costs in line? Well, here's a relatively simple wedding. Something that uh, some floaters tend to forget 
is that these arrangements are elevated on beautiful glass containers, which are very fragile. They look wonderful, but someone needs to be there at the end of the event to make sure that they get picked up, or what we call to strike the party. Even if you haven't rent, rented them the chairs and the linens and the lighting, and you have just rented them the uh, containers for the centerpieces, remember, these need to be picked up that night or first thing the next morning by arrangement with the facility because if anything is broken, you need to charge the bride and you need to have a clause in your contract that says that. If you leave them till Monday morning, most hotels and function suites will not be responsible for them. So you could have a, a hefty bill on your, on, you know, your side. What we started a few years ago was to add on a 15 to 20 percent fee, which includes service, delivery, setup, and strike to the bottom of our contract. And very, very few people have ever complained about this fee. So we need to partner with other wedding vendors who can supply the products that we need to help with our add-on sales. When you're first starting out to provide more than the floral for weddings or events, it's probably best that you suggest to your bride that these are options that are available from you. We need to educate our public. Impress upon them that you are capable of providing draping, shivari chairs, linens, etc., and start out by marking these items up by purely subcontracting them to the appropriate company that hopefully you've created a relationship with. Let's face it, we don't want to purchase rooms full of draping when it's something that not everyone in your area wants to rent on a regular basis. Having said that, you can be very smart in starting out. And if you have a client who's been faithful to you, then this would be a perfect place to showcase the capabilities that you have via items that you own and subcontractors that you use so that you have a captive audience and that you look like a shining star in her eyes and then hopefully from there on you will get extra business from that. One interesting statistic to share with you is that of every wedding that has five bridesmaids, there are three of those girls that are either engaged or will get married in the future that will need a florist. So this is your time to shine. However, when you have ordered the linens yourself, your staff have to be responsible to install them, thus showing the benefits of the client by booking everything through you. So determine what sells and inventory it. Be a one-stop shop for your bride and you will be successful. You can take a hotel room, a conference room, or a section of a ballroom and change the look of it dramatically by creating a lounge area by using rental furniture, which could be sideboards, side tables, meters, lighting, draping, and so on, so that your wedding event, wedding or event guests will have somewhere to sit, relax, and chat. In this photograph, you can see that we've may also made a very simple chandelier out of a 1960s-style beaded curtain, which added shimmer and shine to the room. We've also taken a sideboard and filled it with candles to give a romantic feeling, and the, the very simple monobotanical florals add the finishing touch. Top that off with some fabulous meters and some soft up lighting, and this room looks amazing. Some of these items that you see are actually in my store as decorative items, but, you know, we had the opportunity to make a dollar or two, so we rented them to the client. After parties is extremely popular at weddings now, so you may have the opportunity to create a couple of areas by the, the dance floor even with lounge furniture or have a dedicated area for the after party. All of these items that you see in the photograph can be bought at a gift mart. I tend to use Dallas or Atlanta because that's where I find I'm very successful finding things that are good for me. But you can order them also from catalogs or websites. However, if you aren't there to see it and feel it, it may not be exactly the quality that you require because rental, rental items need to be durable. So, promote your business to everyone via your website, Facebook, Twitter, wedding planners, 
hotel and event spaces. Your city needs to know that you are the wedding expert and that you have all the new, trendy, modern items that they've seen in magazines. So, whatever it is, let them know. Tell your wedding planners, your hotel contacts, and even your event space contacts and local caterers that you work with. Don't forget to self-promote on Facebook and other social media sites. In this photograph, you'll see that we created a tablescape with some beautiful candlesticks, unusual linens, and unique table runners. Uh, for some of the tables, we used this, uh, and it generated additional income because it was things that we already had. Not all tables have to have flowers, and this is a benefit to the more budget-conscious bride. In this example, we made the moss runner, and in all the long tables, we used the candles, and it's merely a pillar candle that's dropped into a, a cylinder vase that you have in your store all the time. And the, the round tables that we alternated to look with had large floral arrangements. So this helped them to curtail their budget a little bit. So create a custom catalog for your wedding planners and your hotels is such a great idea. Buy interesting and unusual containers so that your clients have choices of fabulous rental items. Once they've been purchased, they can be used over and over again to increase your bottom line. There are very many interesting containers that you can rent to your brides and also corporate parties, so keep that in mind too. Collect a variety of different sizes of containers that are unique that you can suggest to your clients and use as an add-on sale. When starting out, it's a very good idea to buy a collection of unique containers, perhaps from FTD to start your inventory, and I still do that, because there are containers that perhaps are meant for flowers that you can further use them as hurricanes or something along that line. So, you know, that's a great way to get started out, and it's something that you can use to send flowers out and later if you don't use them up. So, um, also create a custom catalog and email it to all of your corporate clients and all of the wedding planners that surround you in your city. Usually brides are local, so you can show them the real thing. But if it's a destination wedding, or the bride would like some photographs, then you can rename the catalog and send it to her. We have a rental company that we work with that are good enough to take the small catalogs that they have and they print our store name on them so that the perception that the bride has is that we own this furniture, which is really a great thing. But make sure it's got prices in it, and if possible, give each item a name to refer to. It makes it easier for everyone involved. Here are some more examples of our rental items. The sparkly holder looks amazing in a cocktail table or a small table with a pillar candle in it. Your only expense is a new pillar candle occasionally after the inv initial investment of the container. The candle holder costs $64.00. We rent it for $30 a time, and we probably rented that out about 40 or 50 times. So look at the return that we've had. It's all money in your pocket. Collect a variety of items, such as candle holders and unusual lanterns that you can rent as an alternative to a floral arrangement. Since some brides do not have a large budget, and you, as the florist, can then take the monies that they would take to Michael's or Hobby Lobby and spend on a few candles and a charger plate. This way, you're taking the money to the wedding, uh, or you're getting the money from the wedding, I should say. And you can resell these items over and over again and swell your bottom line. So, when purchasing flowers, where do you buy your flowers? And are you getting the best price? You will get the, the best quality by going Grower Direct or from FTD. But if you can't do this, or you don't need the quantity, think of this scenario. We recently needed 200 hot pink roses for one event, and for another event, we needed 50 coral roses. I ordered the 200 hot pink from a grower and paid the same as we did for the 50 from a local wholesaler. Oftentimes, you can get smaller quantities, but really, you need to watch your price. As a retail florist, you can sell those extra flowers in your shop for a really good price and bring in some extra customers. And since you were practically free, you can do an in-house special with the extra flowers that you buy. What a great way to bring people through your doors. 
when we would order, say, tulips for a spring wedding, we would sell the extras in bunches of 10, often still on their sleeves, and the customers would call to see when they were coming in and what in-store specials we had because we had already determined or created a, an image within our, our locale. It was fun to watch people coming in and raking through the boxes looking for the color that you wanted or the amount that they wanted. So don't feel like if you get a great deal on a product that you can't get a good deal on extras to your regular clients. Again, it brings people through your doors. People love a bargain, and especially if it's a great quality product that they know is going to last a while and not cost them a lot. So wholesalers versus growers or brokers. We've already talked about this issue, but this is something that we can really do to save money. If you're not already buying direct, or at least some of the time, why not try it or to compare the prices and the quality of what you get locally? Check out places where you can buy flowers. Many growers and brokers advertise in publications such as SAF's Floral Management Magazine or search online and look for companies on Facebook, etc. Most of them nowadays have Facebook pages or Twitter feeds. So you will most likely buy from a number of places just like we do. So make sure that you keep all of your options open. Cost of goods sold. This is an ugly word in the floral industry. But 30% of your 100% should be cost of goods, which is your flowers and your hard goods. 30% should be your fixed cost, which is your rent, your truck payment, your gasoline, etc. 30% is payroll, and the 10% profit, guess what? That's yours, if there is any left, if you're doing things properly. These are the four most important letters in the floral world. So here's a quick lesson, in case you don't know the formula, or perhaps you've just forgotten it. Your cost of goods sold normally will be 30% or less in a retail florist. If it's higher, oh boy, you're in trouble. Typically, florists have costs of the following. 30% cost of goods, as we said, 30% fixed cost, advertising, which includes advertising, 30% payroll, and as I said, the 10% is left for profit. If one of the other fact, if one or the other factors is too high, it cuts into the profit and may leave you with no money left over. So if you have to lower your percentages and your overall cost, then you have more than 10% profit. However, we feel that wedding florists and event companies should try for the cost of goods to be closer to 20 to 23 percent. The reason is there's much more labor involved than a normal retail business, and you might even need to increase your labor percentage. But even if you don't have to up your labor percentage, then you can still make more profit. And if you keep your cost of goods under control, then we're on a winner. As a wedding or event florist, uh, you need to keep your cost of goods to 20 to 23, as we say, uh, to allow for the huge amount of the extra labor that some events take up. But of course, if it's a smaller event, it won't take up as much labor. But you still need to make sure that you allow for the labor that is involved in these events. If you stick to the correct percentages, you will make money. But even if one of them is out of whack, it ends up coming out of the profit, and as I said earlier, there's nothing left for you. So be careful when you're ordering flowers and other products that you're not paying too much for them. Create a budget for yourself. Often you have to pay more due to supply and demand, but in general, watch it very closely. The best way to do this is to have one person within your organization as the flower buyer who orders everything and learns the prices and the quality from each source that you buy from. Do not let all of your designers buy off the trucks. It's the easiest way to overspend, and you know they'll use the newest products first before they use the flowers that you already have in your store. Be sure to rotate your flowers. Put the older ones in display if you have to, and sell them for two for one at ca as cash and caddy. Buy seasonal to get better prices. And I'm sure you know this already, but how do you do it? Sell seasonal flowers to your brides as much as possible. We've all paid $5 for one peony and not been able to get the return that we should on it because it was out of season. The season ended early or it started late or there was rain in California. If you can get your brides educated as to what is available at the time of the wedding, 
then you can save them money or give them more for their money, which makes you look like a star. Peonies are one, one of the most costly items, but one of the most popular seasonal flowers, as it's been shown in all the magazines and wedding shows. You can pay anywhere from $1.50 during the height of the season to 5 to $7 when it's off-season. So when pricing arrangements are the case, please keep, in, keep this in mind, and also make sure that your bride know that you may have to substitute ranunculus or something similar if it's off-season. So have that in your contract that you, as the florist, have, you can notify them that you have the last say in uh, substituting with something that's comparable. Because if the bridal bouquets, which are the first thing that they see, don't look right, then everything goes downhill from there, and complaints or disappointment equal a refund, which is profit that's being refunded. So get it right. If you want to build your wedding and party business, one fact that is very important is getting it right. And you have one opportunity to make this wedding or party right, not two, just one. So you need to remember that. We're all in a very image-driven business, so make sure that you're organized and that all of your team are neatly dressed, not in a mishmash of clothing. Preferably, they should be in coordinated shirts or T-shirts with your shop name on it or name tags so that a hotel or event site employee or another vendor can call them by name and know who they're dealing with, especially if you as the owner or manager are not going to be available or perhaps you're in another setup. Doing this tells people that you and your team are professionals. Make sure that you have everything you need before leaving your location and setup day. Be professional. Have a clean, neat-looking delivery truck, preferably with your logo on it. Nowadays, you can do a total truck wrap, and that's what we see in the photograph that looks amazing. This is one of my vehicles that we had wrapped, and it's not a, an inexpensive thing to do. This cost us about $3,500, but guess what? It's well worth it. It's a moving billboard. Especially if you have a newer truck and you plan on keeping one for a while, it's, it's a great thing to do. It's great advertising, and it really adds to your image. One of my competitors has an old Penske truck, a rental truck, with the letters peeled off. So guess who looks great when they pull up to do lighting or draping or whatever, and then we pull up in this shiny gem of a vehicle. So anyway, be sure to arrive at the time you've been asked to start the setup, whether it was by the wedding planner, the hotel, or the event site. Being even a few minutes late starts to create a panic in everyone, and things can only go downhill from there. Remember, this is a very emotional day for most people. And the last thing you, that you want to do is freak people out by being late to start the job. Make sure your team unload and reload in a very timely manner. They should go to places like the free elevators, not through the main lobby of the hotel if they can absolutely avoid it. Also, make sure that you clean up after yourself. This is one of the biggest pet peeves from hotels. And that vendors leave a mess for their employees to clean up, and then this gives you a bad image. Make sure that you have all your equipment you require, ladders, a comprehensive toolbox, so that you can get in and out in time. Remember, time is money, and extra labor going back to the store because you forgot something, because you didn't check it off, is costing you money too. Make sure when you're doing outdoor weddings that the floors are well hydrated and don't get positioned are put in position until the last possible moment, making sure that everything is set up and complete before the first guests arrive. Setting the scene. Know which flowers need more care than others, and it doesn't take a whole long time for a hydrangea that's out of water to shrivel and die. So make sure that you're using, if you're using them as pew markers, that they're in a water tube that has plenty of water. Now, when creating and designing wedding bouquets and boutonnieres, you need to have very good mechanics because no bride or groom wants their wedding flowers to fall apart as they're walking down the aisle. If you don't feel that you're good at making wedding bouquets or boutonnieres, take a local design class or perhaps a, a hands-on workshop at a state convention that's been sponsored by FTD or go to your local college and take a class. Most modern bouquets are clutch style and are much easier to make than more traditional hand-wired and hand-taped bouquets. And since the recent royal wedding, 
I have the feeling that these hand-wired bouquets are become, going to become much more traditional, uh, or sorry, become much more popular again. Some really fabulous weddings give you the opportunity to be creative, and of course creativity costs lots of money and it, it uses a lot of flowers. But despite the economy, there are still people even in small towns that have lots of money and want to spend it. And you as the florist should be happy to take it. So this is where all of your add-ons kind of fall into place. So you have to determine what niche is for you. Do you want lots of smaller weddings that, have, that are mainly pickups and need no setup? Or do you want higher-end weddings? And you, can, you can't really do both. So you need to choose which one works best for you. There is a lot of hard work in designing, creating, and planning, and setting up, and doing larger weddings, so you need to be prepared for that. You're in control of someone's most important day, and you only have one shot at it, and it needs to be perfect. To beat your competition, you need to be professional from start to finish. And if you want to get into weddings big time, then you need to set aside two separate spaces in your building for that, preferably a room in your location where you can meet your clients, and the other being a sample room with a table and draping where you can show a sample of what they're going to get. It's an awesome visual. Most clients these days want to see that mock-up of the arrangement that they'll be getting in that day, and this gives them the opportunity to make changes so that there are no, well, it was beautiful, but, because buts mean they want a refund and it wasn't right. We first meet with them, and then we send out a proposal, and they're not allowed another meeting until they've signed the contract, which is a legal and binding contract, and they've paid the stipulated non-refundable deposit. The two most important there, words there are non-refundable. This covers your back at all times. And then usually closer to the wedding, we'll meet, we'll make changes, and then they'll have a follow-up appointment where they see their actual sample. So once they've decided and made those changes to the arrangement, we send them a final proposal, which is due to be paid three weeks in advance. And at this time, the 15 to 20 percent that we spoke of earlier as a service fee is calculated and added on. We order the flowers normally one to two weeks before, and occasionally a bit earlier if there's a product that takes a long time to open, such as blooming branches. We receive our flowers on Tuesday for Saturday so that the product has time to open and look at possible best because I don't care if the flowers are dead on Sunday, I want it to look fabulous on Saturday. We also have small blackboards on sticks that we use to label the flowers for each wedding so that there is absolutely no confusion. Everything is clearly labeled and counted, and at this point, any bad products can be reported. When we finish that up, we always try to take photographs so that we can post them on Facebook, our blog, and our website. However, it's always good to ask the photographer to take some special shots for you, especially room shots or, or close-ups of the flowers. No matter how good you think they are, theirs will always be better. It's important to let your friends and family know that you and your business are capable of doing such beautiful things. And there's no better way to expand your business in the 21st century than to post photographs on social networking sites. So remember, anyone can cut and paste these and say they're their pictures, but on the other hand, it's an amazing way to get your work out there on places like the Internet, Twitter, and on blogs. So remember that your creativity and design can be endless. You need to think outside the box, and no matter whether you are new to the industry or have been in it for years, you must, and I repeat, must at all times keep learning the new trends, colors, and fashion. Stay ahead of your competition because there's always someone younger, newer, trendier, or whatever coming into our industry who will be glad to take the business from you. So remember, you need to be the trendsetter and the leader and not just follow up the same old styles and the ways that you've done it for years. It's up to us as designers to set the trends, not follow them. So at this point, if you would, we're going to open up the phone lines for questions and answers. Thank you. And ladies and gentlemen, if you'd like to register a question, please press the one for about a four on your telephone. You will hear a three-tone prompt to acknowledge your request. And if a question has been answered, you can press the one for about a three to remove your question. If you're using a speakerphone, please lift your handset for entering your request. And once again, ladies and gentlemen, if you have any questions or comments for today's presenters, please press the one for about a four on your telephone keypad to ask your question. One moment, please, for the first question.
And once again, ladies and gentlemen, if you have any questions or comments, it is the one for by the four. And we do have a question queued up, a few questions queued up, from the line of Stacy from a Blossom Shop. Let's go right ahead. Hi, Ian. Thank you for your time today. I do have you're a welcome. question. Oh, thank you. Uh, I do have a question. When you're doing the wedding consultation, what is your feeling on having a consultation fee, charging the bride a fee to sit down, go over her ideas, even your giving input, uh, and then taking that fee and applying it to the cost of the wedding when they go to book it? Well, you know, I've toyed with this for a number of years because in our instance, you know, we do a lot of high-end weddings, and sometimes I kind of feel that, that I'm just a third proposal for daddy so that other people look like their prices are better. Um, I, I really, I feel it's a turn-off, and I understand, you know, it, it's, it's your time, but I think you need to take the chance, and if you are, you know, awesome and that bubbly personality comes to the surface and you feel and you show them that you're really interested in doing their wedding, then I think you'll do it. I think, you know, we have some florists in our area that charge 50 and $75 for the consultation fee uh, that is applied to the final bill, but I don't know. I just kind of feel like it's a turnoff. Okay. Thank you very much. Most welcome. Thank you for calling. Thank you. We'll proceed to our next question from the line of Eliza from Flowers by Bernard. Just go right ahead. Hi, I was wondering if you have a sample of a contract that you provide for the um, brides and grooms in addition to the um, proposal, which would list all um, their items. Yeah, we do have, you know, and I, w I would be glad to share that with you. Um, if you just give your information to FTD, then they'll ha they'll pass it on to me. But yes, we have we have a fairly watertight contract. Um, we've been burned a few times, so we've had to change that to to cover ourselves. And mm -hmm. so we um, we have we a do have a nice That's contract that we would we be more have, than glad yeah. to furnish you with. Okay, because we've just been you know very trusting of our customers, and luckily I have to say we haven't been burned, but. It seems like more and more people are asking me to provide them with right. a I, I think, contract. you know, what's happening nowadays is that we're dealing with young professionals. Uh, you know, girls these days are more street smart and they realize all the legalities that are provided to them or asked of them when they sign up with a facility or a hotel or yes, yes, yes. other services. And I think, I think they fully expect to get it from the flower shop too. And, I, and it's a good mm -hmm. thing because then it makes you appear much more professional as well. So no, when I, we send I, out the... I just don't, I never like to reinvent the wheel. So if, you know, if there's something out there and I have... Well, this is know, something that we we put together ourselves. And, you know, we'll, okay. be, we'll be very glad to share it with you because there's nothing worse than getting burned. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, and we'll proceed to our next question from the line of Susan from Dunmore Florist. Let's go right ahead. Hey, hey Susan. Ian. Sue Crable, how are you? I'm well, thank you. Good, thank you. Uh, I, in one of your photographs, you had some lighted, like, loose light cubes or something. Are, are they a, a rental item, or is that where, – where did you uh, come up with those? You know, I'm talking about um, had like a I blue can't illumination. Offhand, but if you get the um, the if you get FTD your your na your number, I'll be very glad to uh, see if I can okay. do some detective work and find that for you. Okay, because they were like uh, like 12 by 12 or 14, something like that, like a footstool size, and you had candles on top of them. They just were really uh, impressive looking. Right. I, I think we got them from a a, a, rent, a local rental company is what we okay. did. Okay. I thought they'd make a great impression. And they're used as, <laughs> as coffee tables, basically, in right. uh, lounge areas. Yeah. And, you know, and a lot of there, – there's one rental company that we have here that's called um, – in service, but they, they have now just been bought out by a national company called American Furniture Rental, which they okay. specialize in, in furniture rental for events. And so they probably would have them if, you know, if you may have Closer them close to, my by region. to your hometown. Okay, thank you. Have a good oh, day. Welcome. Thank you. We'll proceed to our next question from the line of Don of Green Floors. Please go right ahead. Yes, on subcontracting, what kind yes. of uh, 
do you charge uh, a different price than what they charge you? What's your what? Absolutely, uh, absolutely. We like, we add on. Let's say that they're going to charge me a hundred dollars to rent a sofa, then mm-hmm. which is probably more like three or four hundred. Then I would add twenty percent onto that, and that would appear on the bill. So, okay. you know, let's say it's $100 and we've added on another 20 so that would appear as $120 on their bill. But then I also add on at the very end the 15 or 20%. So I'm making even more on it. You know, so you're, you're marking it up by a little bit, but you're making, so you're actually making about 40, a little over 40% on that item for a phone call. Um, of course, that covers the cost of you having you as the event manager or whatever being there to make sure that the furniture arrives and they stay on time and they position it where you've sold it to the client. So you do have to be on site when that furniture arrives. All right. Thank you. You're most welcome. Thank you. Thank you. And before we proceed to our next question, once again, if any questions or comments, it is the one for the four on your telephone keypad. And our next question comes to the line of Marissa from Debbie Bloomers. Click right ahead. Hi, I apologize if this question is repetitive. I've been only catching pieces of things. But how do you feel about charging for samples? Um, What I do is I, you know, the person has already contracted with you. And what I, I don't like to do it for the first sample. We don't do it Mm -hmm. for the first sample because I think that you have the benefit of, you know, once you've made the sample, you can take a photograph of it. Uh Um and and write down your recipe and put it, you know, what's our contract so that you know what's in it when you when it comes to the wedding day. I would never do a sample before they've contracted. Okay. Um, at that point, then normally what we do is we take up we take the arrangement apart. We use it in the daily orders, or we'll use those flowers to create goodwill and send them to people that send us weddings. It could be photographers or you know hotel contacts or whatever. Um, if there's a second sample, then I do charge them for the second sample. And do you charge them the full price of, of the uh, yes, arrangement? Yes, I surely do. And if okay. they want to take the arrangement home that day on the very first sample, they need to pay for it. They do need okay. to pay for that. But if it's okay. something that we are showing them and then they leave and we can split that up and use it, then we don't charge them a fee. Okay. Thank you. You're most welcome. Thank you. 